Hi, this is Rasmussen and you're watching Destination Eurovision Memories. Hello everybody, my name is Matej. Hello everyone, I'm Pavel. And it's time for the second episode of the Memories Destination Eurovision YouTube series. Today our guest is Rasmussen, representative of Denmark at Eurovision 2018 in Lisbon. Hello Rasmussen, how are you today? Hello, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, well, I'm I'm pretty great, despite the uh, the circumstances in the world today. But um, but me and my family we're safe and sound here in 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 the in Jutland in Denmark. So we would like to start by rewatching your performance from Lisbon. Please let us know. Do you remember what you had in your mind when the lights went out? And your three minutes in the Eurovision Song Contest Grand Final started? Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember <laughs> at all because we were just so focused. It was like, it was like, um, you know, we, we, I wouldn't say overcame, but we, you know, our goal was, was to go from the semi final to the finals. So the semi final performance was like, that was the, uh, the, the first hurdle uh, and when we got through that the final was just uh, after that it was just crazy it was um, uh, just uh, being in the fi being in the, the Eurovision final and and doing the flag ceremony and just the whole night was crazy so it was just enjoying it as much as you can and then when it's time to go down and do all the songs of Mike Mike song and um, and waiting for it, uh, it's, uh, it to be our turn and then go on stage, uh, no, backstage and watching the performance. Uh, I can't remember, I, maybe it was Mikolas who was before me, I think so maybe. Um, and just watch him from behind and just just uh, standing with the guys and, and uh, be grateful to be there and, and just know, you know, you can't do anything now, you just have to, you can't run away, you just have to do it, go in and do do what you were supposed to do and uh, so so what's on your mind is just uh, stay focused and uh, do a huddle with the guys and uh, and when they say go you go okay please tell me what do you like the most about this performance is there anything you would change if you could well um, you know, of course you always see some some things that you want to change a minor or minor Flaws, maybe vocally, maybe staging-wise, uh, uh, but I, I can't. You know, you can't live in the past. It's what's done is done. But what I like, probably like the most, uh, uh, is the is that we went for the uh, no, that I went for the uh, come on, walk with us, because uh, because you really could feel. Uh, the, the the room just elevated at that point, and when you rewatch it and, and see the comments, you just it's just uh, yeah, you get that epic sense. <laughs> so that was that was great. There's no such thing as a perfect Eurovision performance. So so well, what if I was to say yeah, I would like to do it again. Maybe something else would. would uh, would not be perfect. No, some something else. It definitely wouldn't be perfect, and and maybe you didn't have the the sense of when we did that. Come on, walk with us. Wouldn't be as 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 epic as as it uh, turned out to be. So uh, so no, I'm 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 very happy. So we would like to know how many points from one to ten will you give yourself and your team for this presentation? Uh, from the final presentation, a nine. I think we, I think we did great. A ten would be perfect, and of course there was some minor errors. Um, uh, we're five guys singing together. Of course, they would. We can't stay 100% hard uh, uh, vocally on point uh, all the time. And um, and some of my guys also uh, forgot to to uh, to step back at the right point. But luckily they did it simultaneously, so that was very good. <laughs> that they both and. Um, uh, so, so yeah, and I. Okay, and now it's time for questions from fans and the Destination Eurovision editorial team. So let's go. The first question is, 
what's your the funniest story or memory from your Eurovision journey? It's probably uh, it's probably it's two sides. It's uh, the whole f the, the whole night of the final. Uh, it was just it's just uh, you can't uh, really compare it to the semifinals. There's just another vibe on the on final evening. I think uh, it was just a great night and coming in uh, and uh, as sort of underdogs and then taking a hit with the juries and then just taking the top ten. It was uh, an amazing night. But like if you if you're focusing on a single moment, then it's probably when then it's probably in the semifinals when we were um, announced as finalists as number eight. Uh, that was just you know an explosive joy because it was like come on man, it's, it's, are we really not going to be in the final? And then there, and then the cameras went to our our little booth, and it's like oh maybe maybe it's uh, maybe it's now. Uh, because they went to the cameras went to the to our booth uh, as number one, but we weren't picked. Then it was Serbia, and then they went away and didn't come back <laughs> until number eight. And eight, and I thought, come on, man, it's got to be now. And when it was, it was just like a huge relief that we were in the finals. And and looking uh, and looking at the scoreboards afterwards, it was never, yeah, there weren't weren't any doubts that we were uh, to be in the finals, but on the night you you it's just you can't know for sure at all i would like to ask what was what was the most emotional moment from the from the whole eurovision time the most emotional uh, experience uh, situation was was the first time i stepped on and and sang high ground in the danish national finals because because that's when you really that's when I really felt the um, the the fans uh, the, how how much they liked the song uh, and me you know looking out and and standing there before singing and just see how many people just were rooting for me you know with the with the Viking helmets and stuff like that on. And there was just, it, it was very moving. So uh, I had to shake that off uh, in the first song, definitely. Uh, because it was, um, yeah, that was very emotional for me. And which rehearsal of all you had in Lisbon was your favorite and why? Was there something that maybe surprised you? Rehearsals in the, I can't remember them from each other. Yeah, probably, probably the first one, because it was the first time being on the stage. Because somehow, uh, because on the on, on one hand it was, on one hand it was, um, it was great and crazy uh, and surreal being there. Now it's now now you're here and now it's now it's serious. You're rehearsing on that stage and watching the big room. And just imagining people being there, but also being a professional, of course, and do what you have to do on stage. And on the other hand, it was very familiar from the Danish Grand Prix because we had the same staging, we had the same elements, the little ramp and the flags, and I was to go down, and we had somewhat the same um, formations on stage. Of course, we we did some changes, changes, but it was still very much familiar from me in the setting even though it was in a much bigger room. Yeah. What was the most memorable, interesting question or interview you had during this Eurovision? <laughs> Man, I can't remember that. You get, you, 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 do, you do like 1000 interviews in, in, in so little time. But, uh, but of course, the most memorable, I can't, I can't say one is one special, uh, especially one interview, but going down the blue carpet was, was of course uh, very special because you, it's just two hours of walking uh, from side to side talking to people. Um, uh, maybe the most, what comes to mind in, uh, 
hear afterwards when you say one singular interview, maybe it's it was with the German TV uh, in a in a go, golf wagon with my guys. Uh, uh, just um, just having a it was somewhat different than than uh, than many of the other in- interviews. So maybe that was that was that that's uh, an interview that stands out for me. Is there any memory from the Eurovision carpet that you still remember after two years? That it was hot in our clothes. <laughs> uh, but but actually not as hot as we thought because um, uh, but a lot of people commented on that uh, because we have uh, big beards and long hair and uh, and in these uh, designer uh, uh, um, outfits. Um, but maybe maybe it was it was surprisingly no I don't know if it was surprisingly but but it was very nice to suddenly have an interview with with uh, with an Asian. Uh, TV station uh, network, so it's just like yeah, crazy how worldwide this big event is. Of course, there was always uh, also Americans and um, and Australians, but uh, it was the first time that I saw an Asian represent uh, rep- represent uh, Asian network uh, representing there. So it was it was special and very nice. And do you remember what were your first? faults first impressions about seeing everything from the backstage as an artist my first impression i just i just think it was uh, it, it was the procedure the job we had to do and it was to go down here and we are we are 43 i think 43 in my year countries that uh, that had to go go through that and in two nights and um, 26 on the on the final night. So, of course, there's a lot of procedures that need to be on time. So I don't I don't think I had any. I can't remember if I had any thoughts on that. It was just like go time. Now we go and we go in this zone, and then we can see uh, San Marino was. I think they were before us in the semifinals. Uh, yeah, we can see them there. Now they are done with that, and we can. And so it's just like, a, yeah, uh, the way to go, and you know, it was uh, it was time to do our jobs. Could you name your favorite songs and performances from the other artists, other participants from Eurovision in Lisbon? Was there something you liked very much at that time? Yeah, the ones I saw. I can actually only <laughs> only talk about the ones I actually saw. Um, but um, from from my night, there's just a big blur uh, uh, when you're trying to trying to see, uh, trying to figure out what, if you saw the performances from the green room or from backstage or some on the screen. But um, but of course, um, we saw a lot of Nicholas because of all the all the stuff that went on with him and his back and uh, and uh, how it came together in the final. And um, but also uh, Albania. We heard from the standing in the zone, so it was it was always like the the back the back zone where we were having our mics. Uh, we could hear hear that, and I love uh, love love uh, Eugene's voice, and um, and he's a very great a very good guy. Uh, so um, so that stands also stands out for me, um, uh, and then also of course. Uh, um, just banging, banging our heads to Hungary and uh, and screaming along with uh, with Waylon uh, from backstage and just partying with with all the other uh, groups that we sat around. Uh, and of course, there's a lot more uh, more memories to be to to have impressions. Uh, but it's it's all there's a lot of memories from that night. So <laughs> from these nights. So. It's about pro- processing them, right? And are there any artists or delegation members you got along with? You like you became super buddies? Yeah, that was one of the also one of the great great things about about uh, this whole Eurovision experience because we I felt that and felt that us Eurovision artists we weren't competitors. Of course, in some sense we were, but. 
we were uh, I, I saw it and I know that others also saw that we saw it more like you know uh, that we were in the same boat of course we were competing against each other and we all wanted to win and do as good as we could but we were like this group that was in the same boat and um, so I yeah I got uh, still talk to uh, Ari and Cesar on occasions and uh, and uh, Elena I've written a little bit about it not in lately but um, but it do after in the aftermath and I've performed uh, with uh, Suri a couple of times we were in, we've been invited to some of the same some of the same Euro parties um, so uh, we talk uh, we have uh, we have some great time uh, there and uh, I had a uh, super a great time with the sips also and uh and Eugene of course a uh, great guy uh, talking to and um so many people we also yeah we had the nordic night so uh, of course we spent some time with benjamin also uh didn't get to talk as much to alexander but the time the the the, the times we did he was super super nice guy uh, so there yeah i i feel like i've Got uh, Nicholas, of course. We uh, had some great, uh, uh, great, uh, great times uh, afterwards, also. And the San Marino girls, uh, yeah, yeah. And the, and of course, one of one of my good boys is uh, is Vladdy from uh, Equinox. Uh, in general, Equinox, we had we we got we uh, we uh, the Equinox group and our group. Uh, you know, did, did, had had a great time, uh, also. So yeah, I could go on. It's been a. Uh, it it was uh, extremely uh, extremely fun and amazing to share these these uh, memories with uh, with these guys and girls. What did the whole Eurovision experience give you personally? What's the biggest advantage and disadvantage of your Eurovision journey? Of course, you already said that meeting new people, uh, other artists was the was the biggest advantage but maybe there was something more uh, I didn't know what to expect going in uh, so I just uh, thought of it as as uh, an experience of a lifetime and uh, and of course it was uh, as I've said many times before I'm not a, I'm not a, the age of of Benjamin or Ari or some of the younger guys, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe starting a, a, a new uh, the, the af after afterlife. That's that's very wrong to say afterlife, but but I'm a, I'm an older guy. I'm, at the time I was 32 and I had my degrees and uh, my wife, my kids, my my gigs around. So I wasn't about to making it a, some, some kind of a career path from that experience. So I just took it as an experience. And of course, it's opened a lot of doors and it made me, made me uh, somewhat famous in Denmark, of course, uh, because it was a, a high ground is a popular song. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and we got a ninth place. So, so of course, that, that, that's given me a lot of other extremely great experiences that I wouldn't have done if it hadn't been for Eurovision, because before I was just a singer uh, and performer in different aspects, and now I was now I'm Rasmus, and so people know me. And then I got to perform for for a lot of different people, including the Queen, uh, invited from by the Queen of Denmark to just come and and sing sing at one of her uh, uh, private um, arrangements. So that was uh, she, I wouldn't have gotten to do that if it wasn't for Eurovision. So. So uh, I'm just very, uh, very grateful for the for the experiences. So at the end of our talk, I would like to ask, do you have any secret about your, your Eurovision journey, which you never, ever told anyone in public? It's not because I'm thinking about if I want to say it right now, I'm thinking if there is anything <laughs> that I can reveal. Um, secret. Uh, that that's one of the questions I'd wish I knew beforehand because because then I had a lot of time to 
<laughs> to think about if there is anything because of course as i said before there are so many different expressions uh, impressions during that time of course there's something that that only we got to to uh, to experience and maybe not talk about later but what could that be sorry i am i don't i can't i can't answer that question okay ladies and gentlemen i'm sorry to say this but that was unfortunately our last question uh we had thank you rasmussen very much for your time for wanting to share your precious memories with us we really Always. appreciate it yeah. once again big big thank you it was a pleasure we wish you all the best stay healthy and good luck and a few words to all viewers if you enjoyed this interview i am convinced that so do not forget to like it and to subscribe our channel and of course we encourage you to listen to rasmussen music and covers including those from eurovision home concert if you haven't seen them yet and if you so you can always do it again so see you soon in the next episode thanks guys pleasure